Hey everybody, I'm Sean with the Glimmer Gang. We're going to get going with episode 9. Webcam is a competitive format. Uh, we hope you all enjoy listening. Everybody, take it away. So with um, webcam as a competitive format, I think we need to start at the kind of the beginning of the phenomenon it didn't really get going until uh covid uh from what i remember at the very least uh it wasn't as big but once everybody got locked down there wasn't any other way to play so people had to finally you know buckle down and start doing webcam tournaments which i think is great personally i love webcam tournaments how do you guys feel about them i agree Cockatrice? <laughs> I, I just thought he was going to say more than I agree. <laughs> yeah, I was, we were waiting. Man. Oh, no, I was, I, was, I was waiting on Blake. Elaborate. Oh, if we're elaborate. I'm just going to get into the whole the whole episode then. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that's how we're just leading in. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree on, uh, you know, loving webcam as a format uh, for a variety of reasons. But the main one is that it opens up the, you know, meta and the availability to play to a much larger audience because there's a lot of people that can't make it out to locals or don't have a locals or don't want to go to their locals. Uh, so those people having an option to interact with and play the game just opens it up to a much broader audience. And then I also think like the meta of online play, um, particularly webcam is interesting because, you know, while my local meta might be dominated by blue steel Maurice item decks <laughs> over in san jose it might be all about emerald evade uh aggro lore rush decks or something um and so it's really cool just being able to like mix all these different you know metas and being able to interact with people who experience the game in a way that is different from you um which is pretty cool yeah i'm still very new to everything so i'm only just discovering uh about webcam and it's a very neat idea and i've learned with some particular games already especially up here in canada webcam is kind of your only avenue to compete on those higher tiers of play for some games like uh, Digimon this weekend, uh, one of the regionals that that's of this recording is webcam. Yeah, I have noticed that Digimon is a big adopter of the webcam tournaments. I, I love that about uh, the, the game that they just give so many more people like uh, Sneaky said, they give so many more people the opportunity to play where they otherwise wouldn't and for that reason we have a bigger i think we have a bigger tcg community today than we ever have partially because of that people finally have a way they're like i can be comfortable at home and i can finally play this game that i really find that i like and i don't have to ordinate don't i don't know anybody i don't have to know anybody it's it's pretty great and i think the potential for it is pretty high um you see things like uh, spell table with uh, Magic the Gathering. Are, if you guys are familiar with that, not really. No. Magic Sam, I think. So basically, what it is is you. It's webcam based, but it's through an application that's on your browser, and uh, it has an interface to where you can see everybody's screen, everybody's cards, and when you go and click on it with your cursor, it actually will pop the card image up on the side so you can read it more clearly and it's not a hundred percent but it works really really well and it's free so i would love 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 if we could maybe one day see something like that for lorcana that would be brilliant i mean that does sound pretty cool i mean any kind of extra functionality is always nice because not everybody's webcams are always great you know i may have been rocking a uh 480p webcam during my my hero days so <laughs> That just sounds like it would give people headaches. I mean, it sounds like a them problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is some like, I guess, what are some potential uh, 
negatives when it comes to webcam. Let's 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 try to figure out if there are some negatives as well. Drawbacks, maybe not negatives, but drawbacks. The the main big one that people complain about, especially once you get into the larger, you know, more organized uh, tournament scene, you know, regionals plus is that cheating is easier to accomplish on webcam yes and no in my opinion if it's if you are doing things correctly it's difficult to cheat outside of like coaching which honestly is something i don't particularly care about because it's like almost impossible to like stop someone from coaching but as far as like card manipulations and stuff like that like if you're doing what you're supposed to do and keeping your hands visible at all times and your cards visible at all times, then it's really no different from being in person. And then there's a minor argument in my opinion that it detracts from uh, LGSs similar to any other digital client aspect where it just gives people another avenue to interact with the game that doesn't involve the local game stores and thus hurts them. Um, but I think that the increased population of people that are able to interact with and play the game is an overall boon uh, versus whatever percentage would choose to just play webcam instead of playing locals. Yeah, I kind of agree with that because I personally do prefer um, in-person play over webcam just personally as far as all the setup that you had to do and making sure that you had a decent webcam and everything. I guess that's another point is um, the expense of it. You need to have a computer. You need to have a webcam on top of everything that you need for your cards. And for some people, that is not the, an easy thing to do. Also, you got to have good internet so you don't drop in the middle of a match. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that has happened to me during a regionals before. So, and I'm talking like a like a ten second. That stutter. is painful. That that is painful. Yeah, I'm talking like a ten second stutter, Ooh. and that and that's that's all it takes for you to lose that um that game. I was like, yep. Okay. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't gonna win the regionals anyway, so yeah, it didn't no, matter. You, well, I mean, you never know, man. You never know, man. You got to believe in like the heart of the cards or or whatever it is. I think you guys bring up some really good points, though. The uh, the cost of it all to be able to play really effectively on webcam definitely is a barrier, which, unfortunately, along with the price of playing itself, isn't always doable, like you said, Blake. So that's definitely a hurdle. And cheating, I could definitely see how that, quote-unquote, could be more of a problem. I could see of it being more of a problem, like you said, from coaching and also, um, like, altering deck composition in between matches you know like you could more easily do something like that like you find that you're running you're not finding this card enough so you want to you're going to take a couple out and add a couple more you know what i mean so like that's that's definitely a possibility and like you could easily manipulate it back between matches if you needed to if you're worried about deck checks and whatnot so things to look out for i suppose but you have to look out for unfortunately especially at higher levels like sneaky said or like spencer said you have to watch out for unscrupulous people unfortunately because at that level people are they feel like they have more to lose so they're more apt to do something unsavory (laughs) yeah which is silly because if they do something unsavory then and they get caught they just lose yeah, I never understood it. Uh, like I've I've watched a, a, bu- a bunch of videos on like the great the great caught cheaters of like Magic the Gathering and stuff like that, and it's like once you get to that level, what's why is it even worth it cheating? Like you got to that level, even a loss at that level is still pretty great. Like you're at like a world tournament or a national level tournament. Like even just getting there and like making day two of nationals is nuts. Yeah, I mean that's like so top half a percent or something like that. <laughs> exactly but i also have scruples so i mean <laughs> not everybody does that's fair <laughs> um yeah so those are kind of like the two like big arguments against it and can we anybody think of anything else honestly that's really it other than that and i guess you could make an argument for like it's not as social as being around people but i mean you got a headset and a microphone you're you're doing just as much communicating yeah 
in my opinion. Uh, going back to the you know availability thing, and you know we've talked a lot, and one of the big things I harp on is um, you know lowering barriers to entry. I know we talked about oh okay, so now I'm going to go on a tangent because I thought about one thing and I'm thinking about another thing. Uh, is like cost to do webcam. Like it can be like annoying like to find like a good setup for it, but really all you need is your cell phone and then some kind of screen. So if you can like cast your phone to your TV, then as long as you have, and I've literally seen people do this play, like you can go get like a $20 um, TV tray. You know what I'm talking about? Like old school, like eighties era. You sit, you get your microwavable dinner, put it on the TV tray and watch TV (laughs) for dinner. Yeah. (laughs) Like one of those things Uh, from, you know, Wally world or Sam's uh, you get some kind of, figure out some way to prop your phone up so it's looking at the table and you cast your TV and you're good to go. Um, Of course, you can't have much, much more sophisticated and fancier stuff, but I had a uh, a really, really janky setup when I was playing MHA for a while. I had this little, like, I had a desk that was able to fold up, so I unfolded it and put it in front of my TV and I put my webcam on top of my TV. (laughs) Then I plugged my laptop into my TV. Um... (laughs) just because that was the only place I could mount the webcam that was able to get like the appropriate uh, angle that I needed. And then uh, casting to my TV just gave me a much bigger screen. So it was like easier to see my opponent's like cards and stuff. So it was great. But then at the same time talking about like accessibility is, you know, sometimes you want to play the game at three in the morning on a Tuesday. And, um, <laughs> if if without webcam that's not really an option whereas w- no. with webcam you can generally find somebody that's willing to play at all times hours and days um as long as the you know overall card community is large enough which i think is super cool right if, and using yeah using webcams uh in conjunction with things like discord uh, you can, like you said, you can literally find a game almost any time. Like, because I know we have a lot of members that are in like European and Asian time zones. Mm-hmm. So, like, even if you're a late, like up late type person, you're gonna have people that are like, oh, "Yeah, I'll play a game." Mm-hmm. Or who knows? There will be tournaments running all the time. Like, there are going to be a lot of different organizations running tournaments. Mm-hmm. There are going to be a lot of different creators running tournaments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I had a buddy who worked on... Which is, the, I think, do we... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were done, Sean. I was going to say, do we want to do we want to plug uh, ours? Um, Like, you the, said something about that. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and in a second, just because I had this thing that actually, like, tied right into what you were saying. Do it. Um, say it. Yeah, actually, say it, I, dare you. I had a buddy <laughs> that... um worked uh nights um and so slept during days and stuff or his his schedule was off i don't remember what it was from wherever but he couldn't make any like the normal tournaments and so he would play in the um eu or oceana tournaments because they better matched up with his time schedule so being able to do stuff like that is pretty cool yeah that is awesome that is really cool and i didn't even think about that that like people here I, just, I was just thinking of people staying up late but there are definitely people that do that on because they have a job mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and stuff like that so so obviously everybody out there uh is probably already aware if not then um Lorcana announced that they will be doing demos at gamma expo uh april what is it 24th 25th this, yeah 24th and 25th something like that and what a what a demo generally means uh, is that yeah twenty fourth and twenty fifth yeah perfect there we go so they're going to demonstrate the game which is leading everybody to think that uh, we're getting rules we will be getting rules either shortly before it or with it what do you guys what do you guys think I'm of the camp that we will get them shortly before I'm of the camp that since Gamma is on a Monday and Tuesday it will release the monday of gamma that's a good point but i don't remember well what's our what's our timetable right now with the ink ink drops we've got one more left so that'll happen sometime next week and then gamma is how many weeks after that a whole another week to, the to next fill week. 
Yeah, so maybe they'll fill that week yeah. with the rules drop, or maybe they'll have something else. I don't really know. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because definitely getting one more ink next week, and then yeah, they're gonna have to fill that something because more than likely the f- f- that week or the following week will be the rules and the display and whatever videos they put up because it seems like they're prepping because there was that uh, QR code that leads to the site. So I'm they may be trying the to site find that right now to have all of the <laughs> so I can download it on my computer. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, I think that uh, I speculate that that, yeah, I speculate that that QR code is probably going to lead to a different page eventually. Yeah. Of people who know yeah, more, probably a rules page specifically. Yeah, apparently it is a dynamic QR code or something of that nature to where they can change where it directs to or something. Ah, see, exactly. I Boom. I don't know. That, that's coming from Mushu. So props to Mushu for knowing about QR codes because I just learned how to use them like two months ago. So <laughs> I'm like a, a boomer in a millennial's body, y'all. Like, it's okay. <laughs> These things happen. It's okay. We'll forgive you. It's okay, Gramps. <laughs> <laughs> oh At man, the, Gramps. the little guy's not here. <laughs> the the one that keeps us young's not here. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about Teddy since he's not here. <laughs> Someone was talking about him yesterday, and like one talking about like <laughs> making fun of him at um. Like, Gen, like messing with him at Gen Con because of his age. Then they realize that Teddy's 6'3", and they're like, it's going to be so weird looking up at somebody that's so much younger than me. I don't think I'll be able to make fun of him. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, because yeah, he's going to stand over all of us. I don't know. Uh, it's exactly like the it'll... same thing with my uh, stepbrothers. They're much younger than me, but much taller than me. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna assume we're actually the same height, and it's just his spiky hair that gives him the extra inch on me. He's <laughs> <laughs> rocking the Yu-Gi-Oh hair over here. Yu-Gi-Oh hair. <laughs> Teddy's gonna listen to this and be like, "These, these, these are the people I associate with. These, these <laughs> gentlemen." <laughs> Uh, I think it's kind of cool uh, that that uh, we do know some people that are going. So if there's anything to be seen and they don't have to sign anything, then we'll get some eyes on some cool stuff. Hopefully, yeah. My my prediction is is that we get all three starter decks the week of Gamma. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm. You know what? Maybe that's what they'll fill the week before at. They'll drop the deck list and then at Gamma we'll uh, see what the cards do. That would be really sweet. that would be really cool. Yeah, because like my my thought process was like so yeah they lead up um you know with all these different ink identities you know defining what they are and then they like drop the starter decks and so it's like cool the whatever amethyst is well I'm going with chaotic right now because we don't know the chaotic amethyst and the passionate amber and then this is how they play and like they do a little deck profile and like this is you know how the deck works and then they'll do a. That would be yeah. perfect. So, like, that'll be Monday, and then Wednesday it'll be, and then this is the, um, what's our word for, uh, emerald? Isn't it like they're adaptable? This is how the adaptable emerald and the, um, what's ruby? <laughs> I don't know the words. <laughs> Bold. The adaptable. Yeah, I didn't remember. The, the adaptable yeah, emerald and the bold ruby. It's it's like they're all floating up in there. Um, but I just gotta access them. You know, gotta dig through some cobwebs. And the bold ruby. This is how they work together. And then finally, the um, brilliant sapphire and the brute force of steel. <laughs> how it comes together and turns into, you know, whatever. Which that just makes me want to play uh, Blue Steel even more is, you know, the brilliant sapphire and the brute force steel. Like, you know, like the two sides of the, the coin, you got the brains and the brawn. And like, I don't know. It makes me tingly. <laughs> yeah, I will say uh, with all the cards that we've been getting lately, I have been warming up a lot more to the Ruby Emerald idea. <laughs> it, yeah, it's starting to... 
I really need to see what Aladdin does. That's so what I was talking about this last night. Uh, let me see what Ruby Aladdin does because that that is shaping up to sound like it's just a really solid deck, just evasive plus all the punishment stuff. You know, if if um, lore being the yeah. win con works the way we <laughs> it's think gonna it does, it's going to be super aggressive for sure. Yeah, it's going to be mad aggro. Yeah. Which is like, I mean, we'll talk about this in our next episode a little bit. It's just like, I think we're going to have to really redefine what like aggro means. Yeah, for this game, aggro is going to be a different animal. I, I think you're right. But anyway, so that's basically what uh, kind of what inspired this particular episode was, you know, we saw that rules are coming out soon. We got excited about playing on, uh, you know, getting some stuff started and getting some playing online together. And um, we just kind of wanted to talk about the, the format in general for anyone that's not super familiar with it or, uh, you know, throw it out there in case anybody has opinions. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Cockatrice. Oh, Teddy, you're here. <laughs> any any more theories? Theories. I mean, I got like one little last Have we moved into the theories portion or I feel like we have, right? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Someone else can talk. I've been talking too much. You haven't been talking enough. <laughs> I didn't know I was rocking a solo All podcast, right, Sean. Uh, That's your job. <laughs> I know, and I love it. I, I really do. It's so much fun doing that like, comic cardboard. You didn't hear that this one, the subtitle is featuring Sneaky. Yep, featuring <laughs> Sneaky Buffalo. Okay, so here are uh, some of the Glimmer Gang's last theories before Gamma and potential rules drop. So... This is our kind of the last big speculations we'll be able to do because we won't be able to speculate on a whole lot anymore. Thank the Lord. Yeah, other than future cards. Dan's just sitting there with like, uh, what does yeah, what some does of the challenge <laughs> mean? I got a whole video on it, bro. I, what I, I is challenge? I got a whole I'm video ready on it. to never hear that phrase again. I had a video on it before that question was even cool. <laughs> <laughs> I did, <laughs> and it's literally called "What Is Challenge." <laughs> <It's> <laughs> uh, Everybody should go check that out. Yeah, that's from like that's OG. That's I I have not put out any YouTube content in a long time for very good reasons. It was terrible, so don't go don't go watch it. After this episode, it'll spike up a hundred <laughs> views at least. I, I mean, <laughs> that would be aw- that would be so that would awesome. Be awesome. <laughs> You have to find my channel though. I've I've changed the name like six times. Good <laughs> luck hunting. <laughs> Maybe that'll inspire some people to be like challenge accepted. <laughs> Insert <you> <laughs> irony. <laughs> so actually, I'm curious on Sean's theory because I haven't heard him talk much in the Discord. What is your theory on how like the game flow will work? <laughs> Uh, like turn progression and stuff like that. Just how how is Lorcan? Uh, okay, work, so <laughs> break it down for us. <laughs> All right, okay, I'm gonna break it down for you. I'm gonna break it down for you right here. So everybody, you heard it here first. When it, you can thank me later. Um, so I would imagine uh, it's gonna be very similar to, and I've said this before. It's gonna be Magic Light. So I feel like bit much like every other card game, you're going to start your turn by drawing a card. I don't think that's too out of the box. Um, But at that point, I don't think that you're going to be super restricted as far as what you can and can't do during your, let's call it your active phase. So you can basically like, you can play uh, glimmers and actions and items like, Okay, I guess I should rewind a little bit because I foresee a resource system that at this point, especially with so many big costing cards, I could see it being something that's cumulative over turns. So like you get one turn one, then you get like two turn two or maybe even one turn two and then you get two turn three and then four turn four. Something similar to that I could see that is uh, how you could get lore because I don't know how likely it is that we're going to be uh, pitching uh, cards for resources because I know that's I, another popular theory. I really theory. hope not. Then, uh, then, 
Yeah, I, I hope I hope we don't see pitching cards either. That's not a feel good mechanic at all. That doesn't like I don't want to I don't want to have to spend say my my Tinker Bell to cast something earlier than her. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't right. feel great. So with that in mind, I think you'll be able to have like I said a cumulative type thing. Like early like early turn one two t- turn two, you probably won't do anything too flashy. Like you might get a Cheshire Cat down on turn two. Or you might get a Tinkerbell down turn two, which is which is good. Like I, that's that's all right with me. And it would allow you to get like a, a gone to down turn like four or five potentially. And I think we'll see ramp in this game. I don't think we've seen it yet because it would give away too many rules that they haven't wanted to give away mm-hmm. yet. Um, and for those of you that don't know what ramp is, that is a way to generate more resources than you would normally be able to. Yeah, and then normal turn progression, you're gonna you get to play all your things. And in that same type of phase, I think it's going to be kind of similar to Digimon in respect to you can like you can attack and then you can like play a play a tamer or whatever and then attack with a different guy or in this case quest, I would assume is what it what it what we're going to be calling it, obviously, since uh, uh, Maurice cares about quests. Yeah, so so Maurice uh, dropped today and. You know, we've been spec we, yes, we've been speculating did. on and Maurice looks absolutely phenomenal. Um and we've been Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. We've been it. speculating on there being a quest in mechanic, you know, since D twenty three. And uh today was the first day that we got it named on a card, so we know that questing is in fact a thing. What that thing is, that's what we're here to discuss. Back to Sean. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And uh, that, that, that kind of wraps it up. That's basically it. And, and I also think that uh, I was in the camp that you would gain your lore at the end of your turn. But in seeing how uh, it all works together, I think that, like, it'll be per quest now. I think you'll gain, like, you'll quest. If it's successful, you'll gain it. Quest again. If it's successful, you'll gain it. Something similar to well, that. What would define successful? Um. I'm gonna give a little breakdown. You gained lore, okay? But like, what well, you gained what, whatever, or, or I would assume that's what you're trying to do. When like, you quest. what would what would cause it to be unsuccessful? How would you stop it? Or are you just saying it's just instant? What stop a quest? Yes. I I assume that uh, that's what challenge is now. Like, I used to think that challenge was what you would actively do on your turn to gain the lore, but it seems more and more plausible now that. Um, challenge is what you do back i strongly disagree but we'll oh, get so there later kind of like <laughs> <laughs> yep I, we'll get there. I, the, let That's me okay. let me just uh, spell it out you're so you're comparing it to magic so questing is basically attacking what essentially uh, attacking f- for magic and then challenging is choosing your blockers that's right. what you're comparing it to. right okay, and gotcha, I, hey gotcha. i would happily be wrong <laughs> and that's just my theory and i would happily be wrong i, I have no problem with that at all it does that does not make or break the game for me at all no uh, not that you said it that way i can kind of see it that way but i i'm still on the same hill as sneaky i'll let you go <laughs> off on that <laughs> <laughs> all right let's hear it sneaky let's hear it oh, okay well, the the hill that Blake is talking about is that <clears throat> just that questing resolves either instantly or at end of turn, which you know you, you already agreed with. Um, but uh, on on that note, is that challenging is a proactive uh, measure, not a reactive one, uh, and basically it's that you know questing is what you do on your turn to gain lore. Challenging is what you do on your turn to prevent your opponent from gaining lore. And so questing is oh. questing is an aggro play. Challenging is a tempo play. Uh, in you know sure. okay. card TCG terminology. And you know, some cards obviously are gonna flip that over a little bit, you know, with Mulan turning it into an aggro and a tempo play. Plus her stats are higher than her cost is Mulan's just such a good card. <laughs> <laughs> game's not even out now and i'm Agreed. just like mulan's broken um yeah. but uh similarly maurice is nuts she, she really does kind of look broken yeah. um but yeah so basically 
the my reasoning for that is just the way that the cards read. So if challenging is a defensive thing, Robin Hood's good shot is a completely and utterly useless ability. It does absolutely nothing. Like if you challenge on your opponent's turn, that's true. Yours. You've got me there. So similar with like even, yep that you got yeah, me there like you made a couple other things and some different ways things interact uh, but that's the easiest uh example that's just kind of a thing like i think there's a lot of people in the community that are coming from a magic background but having played you know some digimon lately and then also getting into pokemon recently you know i'm seeing the other side of the coin where you're playing a game that doesn't have any reactions and so everything you do has to be proactive and i think that's the way that this game is going to play as well is that you're you're not going to be reacting to things you're going to have to be proactive about whatever it is that you're doing yeah another thing that i know that we know for certain that also feeds into this theory is that we have permanent damage having damage that sticks around it doesn't really line up with the um magic way of doing things uh, because their uh, damage isn't permanent right yeah that's true that's that's a good point i mean that one change alone just completely changes like every single meta in in magic the gathering (laughs) like you can no you can no longer like (laughs) brick with you know you're just sitting there and you can't attack because all of your opponent's stuff is just going to block and there's nothing you can do about it. It's like, well, now you can at least get chip damage in, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. you can eventually chip down a giant character if you need mm-hmm. to. Like Maurice with that seven health. <laughs> He's yeah. got the donk. It's true. <laughs> yeah, two seven. I'm not mad about that at all. At a six cost either. It's That's not bad. That's not bad stat wise. He's And uh, his abilities are pretty awesome too. These are nuts. His, his abilities are pretty nuts, he, yeah. So his first ability is give it a try. Whenever this character quests, you pay two hexagons less for the next item you play this turn. And his next ability is it works. Whenever you play an item, you may p- draw a card, which is crazy. You can just drop and quest a Maurice and drop it by two, throw down a magic mirror for free and draw a card. Like, what? <laughs> Boom. Yeah, and I I was going to say this also just really lends itself to the idea of things can happen in any order of your turn, and that's where your strategy is going to come in. So making sure that you quest with Maurice first so you can get that discount on your item and then play your item, that's where the strategy is gonna, and complexity is going to come from is utilizing your cards in a certain order in order to get the best use out of them (laughs) yeah i i agree i think um yeah between him and mulan and some other stuff uh that order of operations is going to be order of operations and managing your line um which more tcg terms for people that aren't familiar means line of play it's basically your, your order of operations you know how what line if you lined up all the cards that you're playing in order what that would look like um and managing that's going to be like that that skill differential that you're talking about blake i totally agree yeah i don't know i'm just i'm very excited uh for gamma coming up obviously because we're getting some tangible stuff and i can't wait to see how steel emerald plays because that's where i think my i think that's where my head's at right now Interesting. You mean steel sapphire? No, I mean steel emerald. <laughs> no, steel emerald. Steel emerald. Yeah. Green steel. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the decks. <laughs> no, green steel. No, it, and that really all banks on um, hopefully getting some good, uh, good steel and emerald actions. If we don't have any good steel and emerald actions, my idea falls through. Oh, are you on this the the Lady Tremaine height? But I have hope. Why don't why don't you not why don't why don't you not not yell at me? I'm not yelling at you. I'm just you know I'm just dis- I'm, I'm, yes, I'm I disappointed. That's all I'm saying. I, one, <laughs> it's more it's more the it's more t- I'm more on the 
I'm more on the Tinkerbell train, honestly, and I just think that that's a really fun okay. and Cruella, all that, all okay. that. Okay, using stuff. using Tinker to loot and filter out, and then using Tremaine to bounce back options. Okay, I, I can, yeah, I, I can see what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm picking up a Beelzebub deck for Digimon, so I can't really talk about anything because my entire deck is going to be my, dis- my entire <laughs> deck is going to be my discard pile on turn three. So um. it's it, it's true. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's kind of how that works. Love it. Oh. And I'm okay. I love recursion mechanics and stuff. Those are so much fun to me. Nice. Um, yeah. Every time we get a new emerald card, the the color gets more and more interesting to me. Pro- probably because yeah. that's the color that we've gotten the least amount of cards with keywords on, and the most amount of cards with actual effects. Yep. So. Because, yeah, we only have Aladdin, uh, Prince Ali with Ward as a keyword yeah. card yeah, so we far. Got, we got vanilla, vanilla yep. custard. And then, then a vanilla. Yep. Not even French, just straight vanilla. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now I'm just imagining like a French jumbo with like a little mustache. and just, Oh, wait, doesn't he, he, doesn't he dress up as a mime at some point? Something. Pretty sure he does. Okay. Anyways, Lilo and Stitch Tangents. You're welcome, Brandon. <laughs> And I don't know Lorcana Dad's name, so you're welcome, Lorcana Dad. Yeah, but on to the topic of the actual video. <laughs> uh, I've got, I don't know, I'm still wishy-washy between like a bunch of different theories. I could see, um, oh, going back to yours real quick, Sean, before I jump into my stuff. Untapping, when's it happen? Oh, good point. I I didn't even uh, factor that in, but it would be after draw before you do. Okay, so beginning of turn. Yeah, because a lot of people have been been theorizing end of turn, which like, I don't know, it's just like feels weird to me, but apparently it's a thing that happens in other games. So I don't really know how to like think about it because I've never played a game like that. So I've been sticking with beginning of turn. But yeah, so my myth. Oh, is this where our hills divide? Yes, yes, this is where our hills divide. <laughs> do you do you want to explain why your your hill includes yeah. untapping at end of turn? I really am the worst person to defend it <laughs> because yeah. I've never played any of the games that utilize it. it it's just it uh, when I lay out my theory, it just flows nicely. I was talking about it in the Discord today. I'm also theorizing that we are not going to be getting any um, instant uh, actions or anything of that nature. Everything is going to be at sorcery speed for magic terms. (laughs) So you basically, you're, you're thinking you can only play stuff on your turn, right? Yeah, I I think that's, I think that's uh, probable. Yeah, and I'm basically of the camp until we see something that is an instant type thing. I will stick to this. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good. I think that's a good point because a lot of people, I think, they forget that like originally, instants had reminder text. I'm pretty sure. Well, they they're like, inst- uh, in the very maybe not reminder text. Originally, no. instants didn't exist. They were they were they interrupts. Used to be called interrupts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When they were, in, yeah, when they went, yeah, they were interrupts. That's what it was. Uh, but like, uh, if I see a card that has something along the lines of flash that allows you to play a permanent at instant speed, that would make me lean because I don't know that you could do that on a card and just like emphasize. We'd need rules to understand that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But if you saw a card with like a haste, maybe it's like a not hasty because that's too close to haste, but something like that. And like uh, you can play them on your opponent's turn or something like that. Is yeah. Isn't um, Digimon's getting that mechanic uh, in what the next set BT 13 after the one that's coming out in two weeks. Uh, it's called ACE anyways. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, sorcery speed. I agree. Agreements all around. Cool. So I'll throw out like my wackiest um, theory, just like be out there and be different. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> I think it's going to in my in my wacky world theory, it's going to work like similar to Legends of Terra, where you know it's untap and beginning, draw, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, except you know obviously we'll be able to 
challenge uh, characters on our turn, choose our target, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Basically, a uh, but that'll be a separate phase. Uh, before that, you will have a joint main phase, and so so you start off with a joint main phase. So both players draw, both players generate resources, both players have the opportunity to play cards in alternating order and then whoever is active player it is can decide to initiate the challenge phase at whatever point they so wish um and the uh priority would alternate between each player each turn um once they initiate the challenge phase the main phase ends and the other player doesn't get an opportunity to play anything and uh yeah then you go into the challenge phase uh, active player chooses uh, what characters they want to challenge what opponent's characters. Uh, the two characters hit each other. They trade damage. Things die. Things take damage, etc., etc. Um, abilities activate. Abilities don't activate. You know, all the good, fun, combat-related shenanigans. Then uh, after that is... Um, or maybe questing phase comes first... And then you can choose, because my, my thought is that both players uh, have the opportunity to send characters on quests each turn. And so maybe it makes sense that the questing phase comes first, then you can go into the challenge. And then that gives you the opportunity to challenge um, you know your opponent's characters that are questing. So giving you all that, that blocking feature that everybody wants, as well as giving Elsa... Um, yeah. You know, a useful ability because if Elsa is able to exert and stop your opponent from exerting in order to quest, then that's like a really big win for, you know, Elsa. It gives her, you know, something really useful to do. Or it also opens up the target to be able to be attacked because I guess in this particular instance, uh, we're going with you can only attack exerted stuff if we're doing the questing phase first. Um, then you'll have the ability to challenge. Then we'll have a main phase two. Why not? We'll have a main phase two. Uh, then we'll have a end of a turn step, whatever you want to call that, where quests resolve uh, for both players. And the win con is, like I've been saying, a Digimon slash Chrono Clash system sliding scale of whichever uh, player gets we'll say plus 10 because that's you know a 20 point scale so 20 health just like in um you know most games uh whoever gets plus 10 lore more than the other care the other player uh wins the game or whoever has more lore at turn 10 we'll say turn 10 um the end of turn 10 wins you're right that is a wacky theory <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's out there, but it's not but impossible. But it sounds like a good no, game, it, doesn't it? it is very it possible. It sounds like a good game. I think it, 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 it does, does sound like a good game. I, I will give you that. I, I'll lot. give you that. <laughs> you know? But it sounds like a Listen, lot. <laughs> Steve, I mean, not really. It's just the same, like, phase setup as magic with a questing one thrown in. I, I, I know. <laughs> Ruterra is fun. Ruterra is fun. Yeah. So I, I, I see it. Yeah. But it would, everything would be in sorcery speed, so you wouldn't have all, like, the crazy instant nonsense of of Runeterra and whatnot, and yeah, but yeah, oh yeah. So I mean, I'm just saying, you know, Steve Ryan, if you need some help in the office, just give me a call. Right, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're free anytime. for the next game. <laughs> what's, what's 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 the next IP we're working on? Just let me know. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I'm down. Next IP. It's just the next set. You know, <laughs> just the next set. There will always be another set. There will always be another set. At least, at least that's what we hope, right? <laughs> that is the hope. That, that for sure is, is the hope. hope. <laughs> I would, I would hate for this game to be dead on arrival. That would not be great. Yeah, that would uh, be very disappointing. But I don't see that happening. Literally, just because of if no, if nothing else happens, it will sell out because of Disney collectors, like. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Even, even if yep. no one plays, they'll, they'll the justify game, it. If no one plays the game. People will buy it. Yeah, they'll still make money. Yeah, yeah. 
I think also personally that uh, until they get a real uh, feel for uh, the audience that they're going to inevitably have, I don't think that I think that we might face uh, this underprinting issue for a couple of sets. I think by set three, it will be resolved. I hope so too. I hope so. I think that not hopefully by set three, not only will the scalp hype have died down significantly, but I think that they'll have a better idea of what their actual uh, demand is and we'll be able to print accordingly. Set one, I think we're just going to have to throw it out as a wash. Boy, do I hope you're right. (laughs) If they can't figure it out by set three, I'm concerned. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. That's fair. Because that's six months in. Like if they're aware now and they can't fix it in six months, then I'm I'm worried. I think we're I think we're fine. I think they'll figure it out. They're well on their way to doing so already. So fingers crossed. Yeah, just acknowledging the problem is is a big step forward, for sure. Plus, like honestly, I'm hoping that my predictions in terms of like pull rates and stuff are accurate, and that this game is designed to be like Pokemon such that the playable cards are dirt cheap and the all the stuff is in chase cards and all the money is in chase cards. So at that point, like, I don't really care if you're proxying a deck when my deck was only $40, you know? Like, <laughs> right. if right. my deck is $6,000, yes, I care if you proxy. <laughs> I absolutely care. <laughs> which which True. If, if decks are six thousand dollars i'm not playing this game like it's uh, it's plain and simple sure absolutely <laughs> if it's it, uh, that 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 price point definitely squeezes me out of this game for sure oh yeah Shoot, flesh and blood places squeeze me out of the game six to nine hundred dollars for a standard deck that's true i'm out yeah with like and the way they do theirs is like they retire characters like they retire whole archetypes once they've gotten like enough points or something like Mm -hmm. that so like you build a deck it's like if you build a strong deck especially it's gonna probably cycle out eventually do you really want to have spent that much money and then not get to use a bunch of those cards ever again in like sanctioned play that's that doesn't feel good yeah no i mean unless they have like a historic format which i don't know if they do or not i'm not sure i don't think so because i don't think enough stuff has rotated out yet but maybe probably hasn't been around long enough yeah Yeah, yeah, um, exactly i mean that's the argument for any any rotating format but you know most rotating formats don't have 900 hundred dollar (laughs) decks as as your like standard deck price Um, 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 yeah exactly like it's your like 200 dollars is your standard standard deck price that's about right yeah that's about right and then there's, you know, eternal format games. <laughs> AKA Yu-Gi-Oh! And Commander. And <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Commander. You're gonna be so salty when we play our first game of hand Commander, and I'm like, I never want to play this again. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I don't. You don't even like. Just try it once. That's all you gotta do. Just try it once. I'll try it once. I'm like, cool. Can we play? I can't promise that you'll even like it. Just try it once. Yeah. I saw one of my my buddy owns a a game shop, and uh, his next commander night, he put out a poll of like what version of commander people wanted to play. So there was like, pauper commander, something else, but then the one that was winning was two headed giant commander. Which I'd totally be down for two headed uh, giant yeah. commander. I love two headed giant. Yeah, that sounds interesting. I'd definitely play yeah, that. I mean, it's just two headed two headed giant, but you have commander decks. I assume maybe you have an even bigger life total than normal two headed giant. I don't know how it works. Yeah, we did the other night at my board game night uh, and Magic night. We played a three v three game of commander, so three headed giant, I guess. And it was fun. It was a lot. It was crazy, but it was a lot of fun.
So yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode of the Glimmer Gang podcast and make sure to check us out on all of our socials and we'll uh, look forward to you listening next time. Bye.